Hey Ape Scholars, in today's video, we'll be going through the Unit 7 frame review so that you can build a complete understanding of air pollutants. Remember that it's really important to be able to think about and connect ideas from different units on the FRQ section of the exam. So as we go through this video today, make sure that you keep asking yourself the question, how are these Unit 7 air pollutants related to the energy sources we learned about in Unit 6 and the land uses that we reviewed in Unit 5? And remember that these frame reviews in this video series are best used to practice making topic to topic connections and integrating information into a complete understanding. If you wanna actually just review the basic content you need to know for Unit 7, make sure to click that link in the video description below to check out the ultimate review packet. Not only does it have the content review videos and study guides for all nine units, along with tons of practice MCQs and FRQs, but it it also has all of the unit frame review sheets that we've been going over in this frame review series. And you can access these frame review templates that we've been going over in this series with a free preview of the ultimate review packet. So you can take advantage of this review method, whether or not you purchase the entire packet. Now, the nice thing about unit seven is that the frame review template for this unit is even simpler than in unit six. The enduring understanding for every topic in unit seven is human actions have physical, chemical, and biological consequences for the atmosphere. And we can simplify this down to four basic questions for each of the air pollutants that we're going to review in unit seven. First, where do these air pollutants come from? Second, what are the environmental consequences of these air pollutants? Third, what are the human health consequences of these air pollutants? And finally, are there any mitigation strategies or ways that we can reduce the effects of these air pollutants? So let's go through an example of how you could use this unit seven frame review template to review topic 7.2, which is photochemical smog. First, we need to remember that photochemical smog is a form of pollution that results from nitrogen oxides or NOx reacting with volatile organic hydrocarbons or VOX in the the presence of sunlight and heat. So to answer the question of where it comes from, we need to review where NOx and VOX come from. Now NOx come from fossil fuel combustion, but especially car exhaust or other vehicle exhaust in urban areas. VOX also come predominantly from vehicle exhaust since we're burning hydrocarbons, but they can also be released from paints, cleaning products, and glues. Before we review the environmental consequences of photochemical smog, we should review how it actually forms from this interaction of NOx and VOX. When nitrogen dioxide is exposed to sunlight, it breaks down into nitric oxide or NO and a free oxygen radical. This free oxygen radical then combines with O2 in the atmosphere to form tropospheric ozone or O3, which is one of the main components of smog. Now, without Vox present, this reaction reverses and prevents too much ozone from building up in the troposphere. But when Vox are present, they bind with nitric oxide and prevent the reversal of ozone formation, which causes ozone to build up. This mixture of ozone, NOx, and VOX is collectively referred to as photochemical smog. Since its buildup results in a dense haze, it can lower photosynthetic rates in plants by decreasing sunlight penetration, and it can also directly damage plant stomata. From a human health standpoint, photochemical smog can cause eye irritation, worsen existing asthma, and even lead to respiratory tract inflammation. Now, when it comes to mitigating the effects of photochemical smog, we're going to want to target its two main ingredients, NOx and VOX. If you're a government organization, you could incentivize citizens to switch to electric vehicles with a tax rebate or by subsidizing charging stations that lower the cost of owning an electric vehicle. Or you could increase the fuel efficiency of cars via the corporate average fuel economy standards. You could also subsidize public transportation, leading to more total routes and lower fares for riders. Basically, any strategy that decreases the amount of gasoline being burned for transportation purposes will help to reduce photochemical smog. Now, subsidizing or mandating that utilities produce a certain percentage of their electricity through renewable sources like wind or solar that don't emit NOx or VOX would also help. Now that we've used our Unit 7 review template to review photochemical smog, let's try making a connection to another topic in Unit 7 and to a topic in a different unit. One topic in Unit 7 that could be connected to photochemical smog is acid rain or topic 7.7. .7. They share a primary pollutant precursor in NOx, and they're also forms of pollution that result from primary pollutants reacting with compounds like water and oxygen in the atmosphere to form secondary pollutants. In the case of acid rain, that secondary pollutant could be nitric acid, while in the case of smog, NOx reacts with vox and oxygen to form the secondary pollutant ozone. A topic from Unit 5 that we could connect photochemical smog to is urban sprawl, or topic 5.10. See, as cities spread out and experience urban sprawl, this leads to more and more car traffic per person. People living in less dense suburban areas end up driving much further distances to work and to school and to run errands. On the other hand, smart growth strategies like urban growth boundaries and building walkable cities with effective public transportation can be great solutions 
solutions to photochemical smog since they decrease the amount of gasoline burned for transportation. All right, now that we've practiced thinking like a mountain and making these topic to topic connections to help integrate our understanding of air pollutants into our existing apes knowledge, it's your turn to try. Leave a comment below this video giving your connection between two topics in unit seven or a topic in unit seven and a topic from a totally different unit. In the unit eight frame review video, I'll make sure to give a shout out to some of the best topic to topic connections from the comment section for this video. And if you have questions or feedback about how to use or even improve these unit frame review templates, make sure to leave those in the comment section as well. Thanks for tuning in today. And as always, think like a mountain and write like a scholar.